Okay, the goal of this series is to give a clear, um, concise, hopefully, workflow for those using the C-Star S50 and how to, um, how to best process your images in PixInsight. So let me go ahead and start with, uh, and what we're going to do is break this um, workflow up into four sections. Uh, one will be stacking. That's kind of the first step is to make sure that we get good clean data that's been stacked properly in PixInsight. So that's what the first section will be. And then we'll have separate videos for pre-processing, then processing, and then finally uh, any finishing touches or, or edits. And all this will be in PixInsight. Uh, we won't use any other um, pieces of software. And uh, hopefully uh, this will be helpful for those that are considering both the C-Star platform and using that and also the PixInsight software. Um, keep in mind that PixInsight is a paid piece of software. There's quite the investment in it, but the good thing is, is that it's a lifetime, um, it's a lifetime subscription, and um, the app is fully supported with a great community, and there's always new updates coming out with several different free plugins that you can add. And then also there are some paid plugins that I will be using in this workflow as well. And so the software is quite the investment. It's probably um, about the same price as what you would pay for the C-Star when you buy PixInsight and then the um, main plugins that I use in my workflow, Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and Star Exterminator. So there are some free other options. For example, Star Exterminator, there's something called StarNet++ that you can use that is free. But as far as Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator, I don't really know of any really good um, one-click solutions out there that would be free. So with that said, um, we'll get into the stacking part of this. Um, and again, I'll try to be as concise and not be too verbose, but at the same time, I want to make sure that uh, you have the information. So I'm assuming that you know how to get the... Um, subframes off of your C-Star by plugging it into your computer. I really don't want to go through that process. Um, so I'm assuming that you have those in a folder on your computer, your FITS files, and that's where we're going to start this process. So the first step in stacking your photos in PixInsight would be to open up a cosmetic correction uh, function here and click use auto detect, um, engage both hot sigma and cold sigma, and then what you do is you take this little triangle and you drag this to your desktop and it names this as a process, process 01. And you'll see why that becomes important here in just a moment. What this process does is it runs through each of your subframes and corrects any hot pixels or cold pixels that might be present in each subframe. So I'll show you how that works here with our stacking. So now what we do is open up a process called weighted batch pre-processing. Um, there's several good YouTube videos out there on this process that really goes in depth to what this does. So I'm not going to get really uh, bogged down in the details of stacking your images, but what you do in, um, is come in here to the light section. You're not going to ever have to worry about bias, darks, or flat frames with the C-Star S50 because every subframe that you'll be stacking has already in some sense been pre pre-processed and has had a dark subtracted from the light. So all we're doing with the C-Star S50 is stacking um, light frames as a part of this process. So let me find Thor's helmet. That's the one I thought we would go back through and do. Um, and so you'd select all of your subframes here and you would open those. What it's going to do is hopefully drop those here into this. And somehow I got a 20 second subframe in there. So I'm just going to remove that selected subframe and then also had a couple of IR um, cut filter subframes. So um, once you get all of your subframes loaded, it'll give you a count of how many you're going to be stacking, 832. And then here in this area, um, we kind of set up how we're going to go about stacking these. And so these are the options that I have selected. I'm going to turn off local normalization just because I've kind of compared both stacking methods and it seems like it doesn't really affect the overall image at the end. 
Um, let me also go and select the directory where we'll be stacking these two. So you'll ultimately get a master file that's been stacked, saved into the Thor's Helmet Nebula. So that's so you kind of will um, go in there and uh, tell the program where you want to stack your images to. So with all that said, then we go over here to calibration. We click on our light frames that we're stacking 832. And we go over here to cosmetic correction and we go and we select that process that we set up earlier. And so these are um, one shot color images. So you wanna make sure that that box is checked. It should be automatically. And then all these other settings are set to automatic. And from there, I believe we're ready to run this stack. When you do hit run, it'll you know give you some warnings that there's no bias, darks or flats that are being stacked with this, that's fine. Um, it's also gonna tell you the estimated amount of space it's going to take to work through this stack. And because I have over 800 images here, um, this is going to take uh, quite a bit to do. Um, so let's get this started. I'll pause the screen recording and come back at the end and show you the result of our stack. Okay, we are done with the stacking and you can see that 832 images takes about um, 33, 34 minutes to stack. Um, so that gives you a good idea of how long this process takes. What I love about PixInsight's stacking process is that it just is really a scientific way to look at each image. Um, I know there's other stacking uh, programs out there and they do a fine job. But what I love about what PixInsight does specifically is it um, measures each individual subframe as a part of this weighted batch pre-processing uh, process and then make sure that you're stacking all of your images against the best reference frame within the 832 images that you have. Um, as you can see, we, we had great data here, and this should probably almost always be the case because the C-Star S50 is automatically rejecting bad frames. And so you're only downloading to your computer good frames that have good stars, that have good PSF measurements um, and things like that. Um, what I was also going to mention to you is there are some great um, uh, areas here where you can learn more. Uh, these are uh, paid uh, um, learning courses. Adam Block Studios has some great um, uh, ways to get started in learning PixInsight. Again, it is an investment, but I would say that the value that Adam offers is great. And there's a couple of other um, websites. Here's one called mastersofpixinsight.com, and they have several workshops that you can purchase. And the great thing about their workshops is you get both some data from them to work with, and you also get some um, free process icons that you can add in to your um, workflow here with PixInsight. But everything I'm sharing with you today um, should, you know, give you a great image um, from the C-Star S50. And so, yeah, we're we're looking at a processing Thor's helmet here. And I mentioned uh, that the image we're working on here is the one I shared here a couple of days ago. Let me find it just quickly so I can show you kind of where we're going to end up here, hopefully. Where'd it go? Ooh. Yep, here it is. So this is hopefully where we're going to end up and maybe hopefully even a little bit better than this image once it loads. There we go. So this is what we're going to be um, seeking to process in the following parts of our um, workflow here. So with that said, we will end this first section that's really been focused on stacking the images, trying to get to a clean master frame. Let me show you where to look. Once all the stacking is done, let me show you just a couple of cleanup pieces here. We're going to exit out of the weighted batch pre-processing area. Then we're going to go to open the image that we just created from the stack. So we're going to come down here to Thor's Helmet Nebula. And during that weighted batch pre-processing uh, process, I don't know if you noticed, but of all these light frames, what it did is it created several folders here. And really, uh, these you know take up quite a bit of space. Like the Cosmetized um, is 3.21 gigabytes. DeBayard is 19.2 gigabytes. 
uh, there, then there's some logs, and then the registered frames, 20.5 gigabytes. And then, of course, your master folder is going to house your um, uh, master image that was just stacked. Uh, probably you'll want to be careful as you start to work with PixInsight and stack more and more uh, photos just to come in here and delete uh, these folders that are kind of, you know, subfolders that produce the master. And so I always come in here and hit delete on those because I really don't need them unless there was something wrong with my stack. And I know that this is good data, so I know that the stack was clean. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and open this image and show you what you're going to get. You're going to get a couple of windows that show you both the high and the low rejection of what it rejected in the stack. So you can see here uh, a little bit of um, uh, uh, pixels here involved with probably the tracking of the alt as mount. So you got a little bit of that. And then you also got your field rotation um, on the rejection low side. But now I will show you a kind of a preview of what will be in the next section. The first step you do after you've stacked your image is you come in here to look at a stretch of the image and be able to see the data. Of course, this image is all green right now, and we'll talk about in the next sec section why that is. So in order to kind of get a better view of what you're looking at, this, this always resets um, the stretch, and then you can restretch it by hitting this nuclear icon. And you can start to see uh, the data that we have here, and that it looks pretty good, pretty clean. Pretty sharp. You can see some noise in the corners. Again, that's from the field rotation. And we'll talk about that in the next section as we get into what I call pre-processing with PixInsight. So that's stacking. Um, basically, the steps are you create a cosmetic correction template. Then you go into your script into weighted batch pre-processing. And there you load your light images. You make sure that the lights are being processed with this cosmetic correction function. And um, yeah, go from there. So uh, this has just been a quick walkthrough. Uh, again, you can go back and pause the video and see the settings that I have. Feel free to reach out with any questions in the comments below or reach out to me on Facebook in the group. Thank you.